G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and as always I'm joined by Flynn today and we've got some cool topics to discuss, uh, namely the Kaspersky ban and also the uh, some of the European nations are being targeted by some cyber attacks and um, there's some interesting... No, not the European nations, the Euros, like the football tournament. Oh, right, 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 the Euros. Okay, so they're being targeted by um, by some actors and there's some interesting correlations there so let's jump right into it and talk a bit about the kaspersky ban in the us yeah so basically kaspersky um very famous russian antivirus used in a lot of different companies for a very very long time uh finally got the ban in the us so i actually know a fair few companies that from a moral perspective because you know Russia is heavily involved in the war in Europe. From a, a moral perspective, they kind of just stopped using Kaspersky in general. Um, but now in the US, you actually aren't allowed to use it at all. I think that this is an interesting step forward because, you know, we had the, we have this officially now that Kaspersky is banned. We were also a lot of talks about the TikTok ban. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested to see how the next couple of years goes with. A lot of these things, obviously antivirus is very, you know, low level. So it's very understandable that they're going to ban that because um, it's potentially a big uh, gateway into a lot of systems. Yep. But yeah, t- TikTok, um, Kaspersky, you know, what's next? It, it could be a lot of different things. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, it comes into a uh, an interesting standpoint again. If you're using Kaspersky, there's no real reason to be worried. Uh, however, like like we've said before, like using antivirus in the modern age, it's not overly needed um, just for personal use. Like if you you can get away with using the regular Windows antivirus as long as you're not clicking on stupid links um, and like really obvious stuff. Uh, but it does mean that. If Kaspersky, you know, say if the Russian government gets uh, pissy enough and maybe they want to, you know, say, okay, well, if you're painting us the ba- us as the bad guys, you might be the bad guys. There's a risk for some, for some, you know, Russian APT to somehow put some malware into the uh, Kaspersky system to, um, to gather some information for, uh, due to this. It's a potential. It's, I wouldn't rule it off the table. Yeah, definitely. I mean... Yeah, as we said that, you know, antivirus can be so, so low level that there is always a kind of a risk there. Yeah. Um, so I think it's an understandable, an understandable standpoint. That's a bit of a tongue twister, <laughs> but, um, it, it's a, an understandable ban. Um, the, you know, maybe it's, uh, what's the word, a, a bad omen for the future. Maybe the American government is a bit worried about certain things. Who knows? That's very um, conspiratory on my end. But who knows? Well, we'll, we'll see where all this is going in, you know, five years' time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just t- so hard to predict where it's going. Um, yeah, so if you're using Kaspersky, uh, keep your eyes on the news. Um, personally, I would recommend, uh, yeah, maybe uh, uninstalling it um, and, yeah. you know, replacing it with... Uh, I don't think you need to replace it with another antivirus. You should be all right. Like the Windows antivirus is generally good these days. Yeah, it's it's quite funny that a lot of these, it's a tale as old as time that a lot of these antiviruses end up being viruses. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're, so, they're so difficult to get off your machine. Uh, McAfee was like notorious that somebody had to release a guide on how to actually remove it from um your PC because it was so ridiculous. Yeah, it got so um, bad that, um, and there was so much community outrage for it that they eventually, after about, I think only a couple of years ago, like 2019, 2018, they released an official uninstaller that you have to separately download from McAfee. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty ridiculous. That's true. Um, yeah, but I, I agree. The Windows um, Defender has come such a long way. You know, five years ago, I would have said it's complete shit. Yeah. Um, but it's actually quite a good tool nowadays. Um, for personal use, obviously, if you're in an organization, that's a different conversation because there's always going to be more risky personnel. But um, 
as I'm sure a lot of our viewers are interested in cybersecurity, as long as you're taking good precautions. You don't, as you said, you don't necessarily need to have um, an antivirus. It should be a consideration. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so moving on. Uh, so we've got the Euros, which is, that's a football league, is it, Flynn? Yeah, so the Euros, um, for any football fans out there, basically all the European nations come together to play in a big tournament, um, and then, you know, somebody comes out on top. So, um, the Euros currently is being targeted, uh, and the reason why I thought this was interesting is we have another really big sporting event coming up later this year. I don't know if you've heard of the Olympics. It's pretty a big one. This is going to be interesting because we've seen it more and more often that um, people are being targeted in um, in sporting events. So this one, that what's being reported so far is a lot of uh, DDoS attacking and also uh, particularly of suppliers uh, and also some like tickets, um, I suppose, vendors are reporting this as well. Um, but look, just a brief history lesson. So the 2018 Winter Olympics had a very interesting hack by uh, Russia. Um, there's actually a really great Darknet Diaries episode I would recommend people go and look at. It's called Olympic Destroyer. I'll um, link that in the description for anyone who wants to give it a listen. Yeah, it, it's an interesting one because it's a very different sort of cyber attack. Most, most of the times when you see a cyber attack, people are either trying to do it as fast as possible and be really in your face like a ransomware, or they're trying to get in, get out, make no noise, make, make so you don't realize. Uh, this one was different because they were taking uh, information, but they were trying to make as much noise as possible and basically put a bunch of red herrings everywhere to make it look like it was someone else who did it. Because 2018 Winter Olympics was in South Korea, and you know North Korea is a pretty prominent APT. So they thought, oh, you know, we'll just make it look like it was North Korea. Uh, didn't end up working because you know we're having this conversation now. <laughs> But um, yeah, it, it is a pretty interesting case study I'd recommend people looking at. Um, yeah, so Russia basically did that because they were not happy that they weren't, weren't able to be represented in the Olympics because at this time um, they were still under the ban because of a lot of drug treat, cheating from... I can't remember what year it was from, but they were still basically not allowed to carry the Russian flag. Yeah, I think um, early to mid 2010s they got done with um like very extensive drug cheating. Like it seemed, I think it was so far like integrated into their um systems, and like basically almost every single sport had um had them drug cheating. So they were flat out banned for I think it was two Olympics or ten years or something. So yeah, not too good. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean because you're gonna have cheaters in every single um nation probably. But this was like, it was it built into their system. Um, but anyway, uh, they aren't allowed to have their flag again. So it's basically the Russian Olympic Committee. They have to represent, not Russia, because of the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, what that means is uh, the Olympics are almost definitely going to be attacked. Yep. Um, I'm sure that uh, it's Paris, isn't it? No, it's yes. called Paris. It's Paris this year. It's Paris. Yep. Um, I'm sure Paris knows this and they're putting measures in place. You would hope so. Yep. France is a big enough nation that they can, you know, put their defenses in so that even if there is an attack and I'm sure that they'll get in somewhere, it's hopefully not absolutely devastating. Yep. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I would say to our viewers, don't be surprised when you see something happen and, you know, maybe don't say who it was immediately but i will have my suspicions yeah exactly and it's a good call out to just be wary of things that you need to sign up to to watch the olympics um and look out for phishing scams and things that are kind of directed towards the olympics this isn't like very russia cent uh central uh but you know it, i think in general because it's such a global event we're going to see a lot of um, a lot of phishing emails, a lot of phishing text messages that have to do with it. Whenever there's big events like this, there's always going to be a um, a bunch of yeah, like likewise um, kind of sophisticated attacks that come out because of it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I got a really good one the other day that was um, 
I've been getting a lot of them recently, but they're pretty much the same standard, but they just have been a lot more sophisticated recently. I think um, they're finally starting to catch on to a lot of the chat GPT stuff. Yeah. Uh, this, I'm sure that other, some of our viewers have got this same one, the the Coles one, where they're actually getting more sophisticated. But the only problem is is that every single time they put the rewards points as 3,022, so it's so obvious because they don't change the, they don't give it like a random number. Yeah. It's just really funny. Yeah. That, oh, I think it was like visa holders. So what it was, was um, there was some stuff in the news about certain visa holders or the visa requirements changing or, or something like that. Yeah, student visas. Student yeah. visas, yeah. And then I immediately started getting phishing text messages saying that your visa situation has changed or something, which was relevant to that. Um, so expect to see some of those based in the Olympics and, um, yeah, potentially be, uh, ex- expect to see some funky stuff happening to the systems, um, while watching some events. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.